welcome again to Chair Interval Training with me, Lynn Hardman, a certified Silver Sneakers Flex Instructor. This program is brought to you by Community Access Yellow Springs and the Yellow Springs Senior Center. So, won't you join us for this 60-minute exercise program? All you'll need is your body and a sturdy chair, perhaps a rubber ball or a stretchy rubber band, um, but if you don't have those, you could follow along as best as you can. This program is designed for you to move easier, whether it's on your feet or in your seat. And we'll be doing intervals of approximately 10 minutes after we warm up. Uh, 10 minutes of cardio and then 10 minutes of strength. And we'll end with a nice stretch and a relaxation. So, I want to put some music on and let's get moving. Oh, and very important. Before you begin this or any exercise program, consult your doctor. If you feel dizzy or just unsafe at any time or you have balance issues, it's recommended you work out in your chair. You'll still get plenty of benefits there. Okay, let's do this. Let's see if this is a good. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to begin standing up but you can begin in your chair, and all we're going to do is warm up gradually. One of the uh, things that I'm going to remind you about frequently is posture. Posture makes all of our movements easier, and the best posture is to elongate your spine. So think of a little strength pulling the crown of your head up, up, up and stacking your ears directly over your shoulders and your shoulders directly over your hips. Whether you're seated or standing, elongate your spine. A long spine is a strong spine. Another thing that makes our movements easier is breathing. Well, nothing is so simple that we can't mess it up. So let's talk about it for a minute. And let's continue breathing as we use best posture. Ideally, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth effortlessly. And if you can't talk while you're moving, you're moving a little too intensely. So another thing I'll remind you about is perceived exertion or talk test to make sure you're staying in a safe intensity zone for you. If anything hurts, by all means, don't do it. Go back to the last movement that felt good to you, or reduce the range of motion, or just take a rest. All right, let's widen our feet out and make sure our area that we're exercising in is safe. If you're in your chair, make sure it's not going to tilt. And if you're standing on your feet, make sure nothing's underneath your feet, except for the soles of your shoes. You could do an exercise program barefoot if you weren't diabetic and that might enhance your balance but I'm a big fan of appropriate shoes for the activity. Better safe than sorry and protect your feet. They got you this far and they're the foundation of everything you do. Okay, we're just moving our body to get ready to do a little bit more. Get that circulation going. Maybe open and close your chest and your shoulders as you breathe and use your best posture. I know, I sound like a broken record. It feels good to move. And it feels good to move with you. I hope you have a safe space there. And you're moving along as best you can. Awesome. Let's see if we can reach and turn our body just a little bit. Lifting that trailing heel so we don't twist or wrench our knee. Maybe it feels good to reach overhead, but if it doesn't, don't do it. Whew. Good, I'm feeling better already. That's a great 
great benefit of exercise is it'll lift your spirits. But not if you exercise too hard. So let's march it out again and preview a step that we're going to do in a little bit. You can follow along in your chair or in the air, but stay close enough that you can touch your chair at all times because it's your balance check. It's your safety zone. Best posture. And let's get our left foot marching on the beat. Left, 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 right, left. <laughs> now we're going to rock it forward. Rock it forward and together. So we're simply marching in place, but we're moving that left foot forward and back. And we can use our cross crawl arms or opposite arms to better connect our right and left brain hemispheres for better coordination. We can take this rock step other directions. We can take it to the front or to the side. Keeping the knees soft, we'll use more of our thighs and hip muscles and be less jarring on our joints. Good. We can take this rock step to the side or we can take it back. We've done this before. Maybe it's your first time joining me though, so I don't want to assume. Good. We can take this back to the side. And we can do it at different tempos. So we're just warming up, but later on we're going to use this rock step pattern forward, side, and back, and side at different tempos to work on agility. And we'll also use it to work on balance. Just march it out. We're going to come to our seat and continue warming up. But before you sit down, if you haven't already, do your best to line your heels and lower legs up very close to your chair. This way, as you get seated slowly while strengthening your thighs and hips, otherwise known as squatting, if you lose your balance or a knee or a hip gives out, you will land in the chair safely and not on the floor. So hinging your hips back while keeping your head up, spotting a point on the wall will help your posture as you squat. Coming down slow and controlled with your weight equal in right and left legs will help you to get stronger. Build strength in your legs and your hips and build dense bones there too. All right, let's get seated. Another thing I'm going to remind you about a lot is hydration because it's so important to our health. So once we're seated, it's a great time to step to the side, lean to the side, and support your ab with your abdominals, support your strong long back, and with your hand. Stepping to the side, leaning to the side. Slow as you go. Mm. I love water. If you don't like water, Maybe you can make it a little more palatable by adding a little bit of lemon or orange or some people like cucumber. Uh, but stay hydrated. We're going to sit tall right at the edge of our seat and do a little dynamic warm up here. Okay, I'm going to teach you a little step that we'll do later on in, our, in the air if you like. It's kind of new, so we're going to take two steps to the right. And then we're going to lift our right knee up twice. And then we're going to take two steps over to the left. And we're going to lift our left knee up twice. Let's do it again. Slow. And lift that right knee twice. Pull the navel in and two steps to the left slow. And two knees. Let's try it a little bit faster. Two steps to the right. Two knees up and then two steps to the left, two knees, two to the right, two knees, two to the left, two knees. You get the picture. I also wanted to show you that if you're seated, 
Sometimes we can overuse these hip flexors or quadriceps, so be mindful. And as soon as that feels like it's not working for you, you could be creative by pulling your heels back or stretching your heels out. Let's try that right now. Pushing with that opposite arm. Push, push. I'll find a V. Yeah, so we can creatively move as best we can without overdoing any muscle group. You know your body and just listen. And if something's becoming uncomfortable, you need to make a change that works best for you. But we're stretching out those legs, pushing with the opposite arm. Let's do two on each side. Oh, two. And see how it feels to stick the sole of your foot in the air. Push it out. Push. Show me the sole of your foot, sole of your shoe. Good. Let's do one more set of two each side. And then stretch out that right leg. This is a little preliminary hamstring stretch. Ah. Keep the back long and strong as you reach forward. Keep your chin up above the level of your heart. And if you like, lift your toes and fingers, dorsiflexing at that ankle joint. And then plantar flexing or pointing your toes down. We're going to sit back in our chair, pull that navel in to protect the spine. And draw the knee towards the chest while we draw circles with our foot. This should look familiar, but it's really good. It's a good way to limber up and get ready for more movement. Sit tall, take your time, and sit, uh, elongate the spine, elongate that left leg, support on your lap, and support with these strong abdominal muscles as you hinge forward. You can do it, come on. Gently lifting your toes and your fingers and pushing the sole of your foot down like you're pushing on a pedal. Sit tall, hold the navel in to protect that beautiful back. Draw the knee towards your chest and again, draw big flowy circles with your foot, one direction and then the other. Now sometimes our hip doesn't, doesn't like to hinge that far, so you can warm up your ankle on the ground. You can also skip exercises or substitute a different one. It's up to you. Take a nice deep breath, open your heart, open your spine, and exhale, closing your shoulders, chest, and spine. Like a cat arches its back. Okay. There might be other things that need a little stretch, so do be mindful. We're going to launch into a very gentle 10 minute or so aerobic activity, strengthening our heart while we're working on agility. I want to ask you right now how you feel on a scale of one being the lightest intensity, uh, you're okay, good to go all day long, and 10 being maximal intensity, you can't even take another step. How do you feel? If you're at a two or a three, you're ready to go, great. Remember, our goal with this class is to keep moving, whether we're in our chair or in the air, and to strike a nice, moderate intensity for our own abilities between approximately four and eight on that one to 10 scale, okay? Eight would be, I feel like I'm working pretty hard. I don't know how much longer I can do it. When you get to an eight, then that's when you want to take it easy. Take a little break. Now you can keep moving in your chair, but I'm going to demonstrate this rock step pattern in the air. You can do it in your chair as well. Take your heels in and as you rise, Stand. If you feel dizzy, sit right back down. If you're feeling fine, check your area again. Maybe come over to the right side of your chair. Keep it right there in your left hip pocket so you can see it with your peripheral vision and touch it. 
should you ever need it. And you can keep your hand on it the whole time and that would be great. March on that right foot, best posture. Breathe. Let's rock it forward four times. Three, two, one. Now to the side. Four times. You guessed it. Three, two, one. Now to the back. Little steps, not too big, but step on it. Two more to the back. Four to the side. Four, three, two. Let's try two to the front. Two. Good. Two to the side. Two. Two to the back. You got it. Two to the side. How about one each way? Forward and side and back. Let's stick with this for a while. So we go forward. We're just marching in place while we rock that right foot in different directions. And we're doing it at tempo. These patterns are really good for not just our heart and body, but our brain. Research shows us that if we work on a few things, we will lower our risk of falls and our risk of heart disease and all other kinds of degenerative things. Agility is one of them. So when we get back to the front, we're going to try this faster. Are you ready? Here we go. Forward together, side, back, side. Pump those arms if you like, or just hold on to your chair. Quick feet. Quick feet, best posture, breathing at your own pace. You can slow down whenever you need to. I'm feeling good. I'm at about a five now on that one to ten scale. How about you? Can you talk? You should be able to talk. That shows that you're not working too hard. One more time around. And then let's just take a breath and breathe. How'd that feel? I hope you're doing good. You can sit down anytime you like. But let's try that pattern over on the left. Shall we? Get situated, check your area, make sure there's nothing under your feet. Make sure you can see and touch the chair. Best posture and march on the left. Got it? Good. You can swing those arms or hold on to your chair the whole time. I like to touch it every once in a while, make sure it's there. Okay, we're going to take our rock steps. Four to the front. Four. Three. Two. One. To the side. Best posture. Move lively. Good. To the back. Four. These are our rock steps. Four to the side. Good. Let's bring it down to two. To the front. Two. Good. Two to the side. Excellent. To the back. Good. Two to the side. You ready? Let's cut it down to one each way. Forward. Side. Back. Side. Let's keep going at this pace. If you noticed, there are four points here. Front, side, back, side. I want you to think of things that come in fours and say them each time you step. For instance, how about the four seasons? Spring, summer, fall, Winter, you try it. Hmm. Here's something that comes in fours. John, Paul, Ringo, and George. <laughs> All right, I hope you got a few sets of fours in there. Are you ready to go faster? Here we go, forward, side, back, side. Pump those arms or keep one hand on your chair. Breathing, 
this posture, light on your feet. I think I messed that up, but it's okay. I feel good. How do you feel? This is a pretty long stint. Do your best. You can take a break whenever you like. You can slow down when you want to. You're in charge. I'm just going to march it up and breathe. Ah, that was good. Got that heart rate up. Working on our agility. Let's take it over to the other side. Check your intensity. How are you on that 1 to 10 percent exertion chart? 4 to 8? Great. 9 or 10? Not so great. Have a seat. Have some water. No worries. We're going to take that pattern one each way, and then we're going to slow it down and build it back up to fours. And then we'll be working a little bit more on strength, but we still will keep our heart rate up. So just get your best posture. Make sure you can see and touch your chair. You can follow along while seated with this as well. March on that right foot. Good. You can touch your chair the whole time or you let go, but make sure it's right there next to your hip should you need it. Good. We're going to rock step one each direction forward. Side. Back. Side. Let's do that again. We're going to actually slow it down this time and turn it into a lunge forward. Lunge and then step side and back and side. So we got rid of that stepping back together and we're balancing and lowering our body into a squat to the side, a lunge to the front, squat to the side, one each way. How are you doing? Want to try twos? Two here, two here, two here. Ooh, can we do fours? Four, three. Got our chair to the side. Last set here. This is hard work now. Do your best and then rest. Last set to the four, to the side. Ooh. Well, that was, that, was, that was tricky for me. We're gonna finish it off with one other set to the, on the left side, unless you don't feel like it. And then you can just follow along in your chair. So, set up for success, best posture. Chair in your hip pocket. Get the left foot. Marching. Good. So it's left, right, left. Now we're going to rock step one each way. Here we go. Forward. Side. Back. Side. Lift your feet. Best posture. Good. We're going to slow it down, get rid of that rock in the. Go down into our squat. Down in. I'm sorry, to our lunge at squat. So we're hinging down a little bit each time as far as we comfortably can. How about one each way before we build it up to twos, twos here, two. Pulse in your squat, pulse in your lunge. How about fours? Let's finish it off strong. To the side with that four. Three, two, to the back. We're almost there. Last squat here. Four, three, two, whoa! Man, I feel stronger. It doesn't work that immediately, but you know, strength work does work pretty quickly. Just a couple, three, four weeks of good, regular strength training will make your muscles stronger. So, What's our best exercise? You know it. We just did a lot of it, but this time we're gonna line our legs up with the chair, and we're gonna get our hips back and keep our head up and go down slow. If you're ready to sit down, I don't blame you, but if you got a couple more squats, down with slow control, up with a little boom for power. And when you're ready, get seated. Wow, that's a lot of work. We're gonna need a sip of water. Even if you don't feel like you need it, it's best to stay hydrated for best overall health. So be slow and mindful. Really engage your core to support your back. And use your arm as you step to the side, lean to the side. Woo! 
is an issue for you for any length of time, you've got other ways to get strong and be fit. Let's take that tubing off. We're going to tuck our ball away and try another set of pull downs. So again, if you're going to squat, you'll want to be well back in your chair. That way, if you choose to stand up and your knee buckles or you fall down, you're very close to the chair and your bottom will be right where it needs to be for safety. So, this time, I'm going to do my pull downs diagonally, like a letter X, sort of like pulling taffy, but keep your body straight and tall. You can inhale or exhale during either phase of this, but if you want to add a squat, it's going to be a coordination thing now. Because to keep your body, no, I'll get that later, don't worry. To keep your body straight while your arms go in um, diagonal fashion will be a little bit trying. You've got to use your proprioception to know where your spine is straight and tall as your arms go out in a diagonal. This is tricky, but I feel like I'm really getting a good workout. And I feel like I'm almost done with this exercise. I'm getting a dull, achy, sort of a fullness in my muscles. And that's a good indication that we're about done. <laughs> that's a good thing. We're gonna hang up this too collect my wild rubber ball and then take our time and get a sip of water. Remember as you get your water, step to the side, engage your core, lean to the side and this takes a load off of your lower back especially. Okay, time for another cardio pattern. Are you excited? If you're in your seat, you've got to come right to the edge of your seat because it's thrilling to be here. Anyway, this is the pattern that sounds like two and two. We did it, we previewed it in the warm up, and we step twice to the right, and then we lift our right knee twice. Then we step twice to the left, over, little steps, and lift our left knee up. We can do it a little faster, over and up. Two steps, two lifts, just like that in our chair if we like. Now if your thighs get sore, you can pull that heel back or stick your heels out or just march in place or just take a break. I'm, I demonstrated it in the chair. You're welcome to move there. You're encouraged to do so if you feel like that's right for you. If you're ready to get up on your feet, take your time, be mindful, driving your hips forward, and if you feel dizzy, sit right back down. If not, make sure your area behind your chair is safe, clear of things. You never know when your ball might come away. Best posture, here we go, two steps to our right, over. Now keep your hand near that chair, go two steps to the left, and now we've got clearance to lift that left knee, good, to the right, slow, and up. One more set, slow. And up. A little faster now. Two steps over and two lifts up. Two steps over and two lifts up. Over. Up. If you don't need your hand on that chair, you can lift that opposite arm. Careful you get clearance around your chair though. Don't kick it. Use that peripheral vision or just keep your hand tracing it. And if you notice, when we're doing this lift, we're trying our best not to tap down. Lift, lift. Keep 
those abdominals pulling in. You can make this bigger or not. Let's switch it up and try a couple of toe raises over here. Up, tippy toes, over. Tippy toes. Up, up. Well, wow, that's a pretty big movement. You can make it smaller, but balance. You can make it bigger, but balance. You don't have to jump ever. I like this pattern. How do you like it? Are you staying in that comfortable range of about a four to a seven or eight? I hope so. If not, slow it down. Make it smaller or take a break. How about we add a little hip abduction? Woo! On the left now. Keep the body straight and tall. Try to balance here, but you got your chair if you need it. You can also put your foot down. Oh, I'm feeling that in my hips. I'm gonna try it one more time each side. You don't have to. And then how about a hamstring curl? Kick your butt. Sort of, not really. Mega muscle. We are working pretty hard. But you get to decide how hard you want to work with this two and two pattern. Good. How about one more with the hamstring curls on each side? And then we're going to switch it up again. Maybe a little kick forward. Don't kick your chair. Two steps. Two kicks. Two steps. Two kicks. How are you doing with this? I hope you're doing all right. You kind of have to use your peripheral vision, which is a good thing. You've got to exercise that to keep it sharp. How are you doing on that perceived exertion scale? I have to exercise my tongue. How are you doing? Can you talk? Good. All right. Whoops. I did that wrong. Two steps left. Kick with the left. Two steps right. Did any of you catch that? <laughs> Let's go back to the beginning with those knees. Unless you don't want to. If you're getting tuckered out, don't worry. If we continue to exercise at a lower intensity, your heart muscles and your lungs will get stronger. But if you're out of energy, or you're just having a little bit of an orthopedic problem, maybe a foot or an ankle or a knee or a hip or a lower back pain, then don't, don't work through that pain. Take it easy. We'll build up our stamina little by little. Let's go back to those toe raises. Woo! I like that one. If you don't like that one, you can do a different movement. Good, let's go back to those hip abductions. Keep the body tall. We're almost there. We're just working our way back through all of the movements. This is a good one for hip strength and balance. Awesome. Back to the hamstring curls, where we did our kick, or brought our heel to our butt. Ooh, a lot of moving. One more set of hamstring curls on each side, and then we'll finish off with those little kicks. Two on the right, two on the left. Got our chair if we need it. Woo! How are you doing on that one to ten perceived exertion scale? As we go along, 
you might find that if you gradually go up on that perceived exertion scale. That's normal. When you want to take a break, march it out. Take a deep breath. And if you're standing, let's, let's put a tiny bit of balance work here. Remember that rock step where we had a forward, side, and back? If we take our right foot, and we're not going to step this time, we're only going to tap. We're going to tap to the front, lowering our body. Standing on one foot, we're going to tap to the side. Get it? Tap to the back. I need it by chair. Keep it right there where you need it. A little faster, front, front, side, back. Side, do it again. Front, side, back. Excellent. You feel that on both legs in a different way? The standing leg was working really hard to hold you up. And the tapping leg was working hard to hold the weight of your leg in the air. So we better balance it out. Come on over to the left. Make sure your chair is in your hip pocket where you can use it. Now tap slow to the front with the left foot. Slow to the side, slow to the back, slow to the side. Slow one more time, lowering our body a bit. Now, a little quicker, front, side, back, side, front, side. Got our chair if you need it. Woo, that was a lot of work. I felt that in my thighs. How about you? Are you ready to set your hips back down? If so, well, you should, we're going to work on strength, so I recommend you get seated if you're not. Get those legs close to the chair. I have to check my music box. I don't know what's happening over here. Oh, it's good. It's good. Okay. Did you already do a few squats without me? <laughs> I hope so. You know you. Do your best. Keep your weight equal as you hinge your hips back. Keep your head up. It helps us spot a point on the wall. Inhale, down with slow and control. Exhale, as you squeeze your hips forward. And when you're ready, get settled down. And let's get a sip of water. Whew. You know, as you step to the side, lean to the side slowly, mindfully. I do a lot of sort of athletic things. I'm a sporty person. And this workout, this Silver Sneakers chair interval training is basic training for me. It helps me move more easily when I go to play sports, for instance, or garden. I hope it makes things easier for you. So cheers, keep your chin up, keep your spirits up, keep your strength up. Strength. We're going to do another strength interval. So let's see. What do I have in mind? Oh, yes. We're going to work on our posterior chain. We're going to use our ball again and our band. You can just lay your band in your lap. Actually, I want to show you how to do this with a band that doesn't have handles. So you got some options. Ta da! I just happen to have one handy color coordinated. Oh. All right, so it's just a latex band that you might have gotten at some point, maybe when you were in rehab. I prefer prehab. <laughs> That's what strength training is. It's, it's prehab to habituate your muscles and your joints and your tendons and ligaments and your coordination to be safer while you move, okay? So take your ball behind your mid-back, and scooch your back and your bottom back into the chair to push against that ball. Keep your spine long. Recruit your abdominals like someone's going to pop you in the belly, but they're not. Dig your heels into the floor, hold on to your chair, and make sure you keep all four chair legs on the floor as you push or hyperextend at the hips. Squeeze your buttocks, your gluteals. Pull your navel in 
and push your heels into the ground and you're getting everything on the back side of your legs and hips and lower back fired up and stronger. Feel it? Make sure you keep all four chair legs on the floor. Now if you want, we're going to add some rowing to this. So you just grab your band. This is a pretty tough one. And row as you push back. Exhale. Dig your heels in. Do your best. Squeeze your shoulder blades together like you're trying to squeeze a little lemon back there between those shoulder blades. Dig your heels in and breathe. We must not hold our breath. It's dangerous to hold your breath while you're doing strength exercises. So inhale, exhale, repeat. And do your best to dig your heels in and squeeze your gluteals. Try to pop that ball and try to squeeze your shoulder blades together. Woo! That was hard. Now, maybe the upper body part didn't work for you. You can do it without the band, and it's still excellent for your range of motion. We're going to change. Get that ball. Come to the edge of your seat and place it underneath your right foot. Be careful not to flex forward too far. Support your back with your arm and just sort of drop it and catch it there. When we forward flex or hinge forward at the hip too far, it puts a lot of pressure on the lower back. And many of us will have a little bit of a challenge in that area. We don't want to hurt ourselves while we're trying to strengthen ourselves. Get that ball right under the right arch. Hold on to your chair and recruit those abdominals as you try to squeeze all the air out of the ball. Exhaling while you do that. Awesome. So we're strengthening the hamstrings, the gluteals on this right side. And we're going to try a little upper body exercise. So just rest. Grab your tube or your band with thumbs up. Thumbs up. Bring your left hand to your heart. And then push the pinky of that right hand down and back as you squish the ball. So we're stretching the band down and back to do a tricep kickback and a little chest and tricep and shoulder exercise. Actually, there's nothing little about it. For me, this band has really got a high level of resistance. So if I want to make it easier, I'll put a little more length between my hands. Still breathing each time you squeeze that ball. If you want to make it harder, you put less distance between your hands. And then it's really difficult, and I feel like I'm approaching momentary muscular fatigue, or that feeling of a little bit of maybe shakiness without pain. And of course, we want to do the other side. Unless, of course, the other side doesn't feel good. If it hurts, there's no rule that says you must do the exact same number on the left that you did on the right. Trust your body. Stack that left arch of the foot over the ball. Hold on to your chair as you explore your safe, comfortable range of motion with this leg press. And how much power you could put into it while you breathe. Recruit those abdominals, pull them in. Good. Now take a momentary break. Set up, thumbs up on both hands. Bring your right hand to your heart. And as you push down, the pinky is going down and back on that left hand. You can add your leg press if you like. You can adjust the tension on your tube or your band. But breathe and do your best. Really think of squeezing your gluteals as you 
Drive your heel down into the ball. Pull the navel in strong to your spine. And know that this is a great exercise that will strengthen your arms, the back of your arms, and your ability to get in and out of cars and get up and down out of bed, that push down motion, right? We do it a lot in our activities of daily living. All right, how are we gonna get out of this without flexing too far forward? Here's an idea. Move that ball to the side. Step to the side, lean to the side as you Mindfully gather it up. I'm going to tuck it under here. And this I'm going to hang up here. And it's a great time to get a sip of water. Ah, the sound of slower music. That means it's time for us to slow down too. Stay hydrated. I'm going to do some stretching, but just as when we're doing our other work, nothing should hurt. And we want to try to do our stretches slow and breathing fully. We don't want to bounce. You may have learned years ago that bouncing with stretches was good. Well, we have new information that says that that could be harmful. So it's always good to keep your mind open and learn new things. Let's come back to where we started and lengthen out our right leg. Support on the left lap. Breathe in through your nose. Stretching our spine to its longest and strongest as we hinge forward, exhaling. Keep your head up above the level of your heart. And gently flex your toes back towards your nose. Relax. Each time you breathe in, fill your lungs from the bottom to the top. And each time you exhale, you can release a little bit of tension in your muscles and develop that stretch a little longer. Toes a little higher. Tailbone reaching back further. And ease out. And let's try the left leg. Supporting here. Breathing up. Now if that shoulder aches to extend it, you can bring it in and soothe the joint. But do keep the back long and reach the tailbone back. Maybe reach the fingers forward and your nose forward. Lifting your toes and letting your arm just relax down to wherever it is on your leg. Knee, shin, ankle, toes. Deep inhale. As you exhale, relax, release, lengthen that tailbone back. Sit tall. Let's get our inner thighs stretched out. Opening at the hips. Knees and toes pointing in the same direction. Gently coax the hips open, so you should feel it here. As we hinge forward just a little, we're gently pushing outward. We might enjoy a little shoulder stretch. Breathe into that area on the back of your shoulder blade. And then the other side. You could always substitute a different stretch. We're going to do one of my favorite stretches, but if it's not your favorite, you don't have to. Think of another one. But turning sideways in our chair with that left hip a little bit off at the front edge enables us to open and stretch the front of the hip and the front muscles of the thigh. Relax that foot. Inhale, filling your lungs from the bottom to the top. A little bit of an arch in your back if it feels good. If it doesn't, don't do it. And exhale, leaning towards your chair a bit. Lifting that elbow, maybe patting yourself on the back. For 
for doing such a good job today. Ease out of that. Let's try the other side. Take your time. I don't need to get a little Charlie horse here. So now our right hip's a little off of the edge. Sometimes it helps to hinge forward and support on our lap. Get that leg to our full, safe, comfortable range here. Opening and lengthening the front of the body and the hip. Inhale up. Again, if your arm hurts, you can shorten it. But open your spine. Breathe deep. And when you're ready, lean a bit towards your chair back. If you like, hinge at the elbow, pat yourself on the back, and enjoy a tricep stretch. I can feel that because when we were doing those push backs, my triceps were really working hard, that muscle. Okay. We're running out of time, but we always need to make time to unwind a bit. So I'm going to invite you to sit back in your chair, support your spine, and bring your attention to just your breathing. You can rest your hands in your lap. Relax the neck and the shoulders. Actually, just start at the crown of your head and relax everything rather methodically. Each time you breathe in through your nose, ideally, pay attention to a different part of your body and let that effortless, energizing oxygen on your inhale soothe and relax any tension you feel. As you exhale, let it go. With your next breath, bring your attention to another part of your body. Notice what you notice. And let your breath soothe any achiness, any tightness, any discomfort. torso and your vital organs and let your breath bring energy and attention there. sound, 
we are in turn helping others. And my hope is that we learn many new things that will help us going forward. So I have a couple of mottos you hear me say a lot. One is be prepared, not scared. And the other one is keep it safe and simple. Until next time, I hope you can exercise with me again. Toodaloo.